How strong is your endurance? When you commit to something, do you see it through? When faced with obstacles or challenges, do you retreat or do you fight? Make sure that you succeed. Tenacity. All of us get inspired at times and we'd like to really succeed. But when faced with a setback, many of us pause or give up. This week, in this new seven-part series, Seven Weeks to a Better You, we will talk about endurance, tenacity, ambition, drive, the drive for excellence, and how we can improve that characteristic within us to really achieve our goals. Because in life, even when we're committed to great things, there will be ups and downs, twists and turns. And it's the level of your endurance and tenacity that is going to be the key to be successful and achieve the objectives that you set out to do. So please join me. Welcome to part four of our new series, Seven Weeks to a Better You. Week four, Endurance. This program is dedicated in memory of Mayor Jacob Harron, father of Lauren, Alice, and Louis, and grandfather of Sam, David, Lindy, Mark, and Johnny. In this series, we've been addressing the seven key and major attributes, emotional attributes, that define the spectrum of human experience, that are actually the building blocks, the DNA of your psyche, based on thousands of years of Kabbalistic mystical teachings, which explore and illuminate for us the X-ray of what our soul looks like. So we've covered in week one, Love, known as chesed. In week two, discipline, known as gvura. And week three, compassion, known as tiferet. In this week, we're going to discuss endurance. The Hebrew word for it is netzach. Now, netzach literally means victory. Netzachon, to be victorious. But victory has many aspects to it. It's the drive to succeed in whatever you set out to do. And that sense of of feeling that you want to achieve your goal, no matter what. You're running a marathon. And after a few miles, you start getting tired. Your leg starts getting sore or other challenges that you may have. So it's easy to give up. It is the netzach. It is that tenacity. One of the ways to understand it is that keeps us going until we reach the finish line. And this is true both physically, emotionally, and psychologically. The, the, the quality of endurance, tenacity, a few other words that you can write, say, and translate to determination is another excellent word. Ambition goes into this category as well. So it's a drive. If we didn't have netzach, and it's always good to look at something by looking by the contrast if you didn't have it, so we may have great commitments, and we may have great tools and instruments and emotions, and all kinds of resources in our, in our arsenal. But what we'll be lacking is that the driving force. Imagine having a uh, vehicle, but there's no gas pedal to keep it going and just wanes in time. Now, this happens to many of us. We talk about New Year resolutions or birthday resolutions, and they last one day, two days, if even that long. So what's lacking? It's not because we're not motivated. It's not because we're not, we weren't sincere in our resolution. It's because there's something lacking in the netzach element. So it's a critical component in life because life is never going to always be smooth riding. Time to time, you can go into automatic pilot. But show me anything that's successful, anything worthwhile talking about, will always have had a measure of tenacity, of determination, of endurance, 
and the other words we've been using for this concept called, or this characteristic personality trait called Netzach. Now, as it is with all of the seven, this is something inherent within you. You're born with it. Just as you're born with a brain and with a heart, and as you're born with the power to see and the power to hear a healthy human being, we're, po- we're born with these faculties. So it's there. The question is, how developed is it? And is it properly, properly seasoned and properly focused and channeled? Because as we shall discuss, you can also have over too much netzach, which is too much drive, and just drive over people. You also have to know balance. You have to also have things in moderation. But the first step is to talk about what is its power. And its power is that it adds to all the seven that element of tenacity, endurance, determination, drive that is critical for the success of love, of discipline, of compassion, and the same with the other three, humility, um, bonding, and dignity. And as we discussed in the previous uh, parts of this uh, series, this level of endurance itself, this dimension also is made up of seven components, which are the other six plus the endurance within the endurance that make it a full rounded and complete balanced emotion. So let's discuss a bit more about this endurance. Now, one of the places we see immediately where people really have a drive is when there's resistance. When you have resistance. When there's no resistance, you can, you can have your self-generated initiate a drive, and some people have it naturally, but it's more difficult. When someone resists, or what others can call competition, so suddenly that can get your juices going because you want to succeed. You want to win. That's why the power that you find in sports or in other athletics with this competition. So you have others that push you. When you hear about some of the great champions, remember when Novak Djokovic, number one tennis player for a number of years, and still up there, close up there, um, he said what was his key to reaching number one was his two opponents, Roger Federer, and Nadal. These were the two opponents that got him to become better because he kept losing to them until he got better and better. It's just like, how do I know how strong you are? You can push, push, push something, but if there's resistance pushing back, that brings out the best in you. It's like a dam, literally a a dam, a physical dam. So water, we know, has power, but we don't know how much power it has. Water can be running smoothly or flowing, flowing in a very... uh, very calm way in a river, but put up a dam, build up a resistance, what happens is and the water can't continue, it starts building up, and tremendous power. I mean, you have the dams that generate tremendous water power, water energy. And the same thing with anything. Wherever you put resistance, it brings out the power to want to overcome that challenge. On the other hand, however, some of us, for different reasons, and we'll analyze that momentarily, when we have resistance, we either retreat or we, or we weak, weaken our resolve. You know, when things are going easily, okay, of course I'll do it. But as soon as there's some type of hiccup, some setback, we give up. Or don't entirely give up, but it uh, demoralizes us. And this is the key thing to remember. The question is why. Why, when one person faces resistance... They drive, they make, it brings out the best in them to drive forward, and another person weaken, it gets weaker or does not have that drive. And the answer is not because we don't have netzach within us. Everybody has it within us. Everybody has within them this feature. The question is whether it was allowed to be cultivated, as it is with everything in life. We are not born adults. We're born children. Children are vulnerable, impressionable, and deeply impacted by their environment, namely beginning with their home, their family, their parents, siblings, then by extension, their schools, their educators, and, by, and their friends, peers, and then the social settings, the things we're exposed to. Those are the areas that affect us. So as much as we are born, just like you'd be born with any talent, if it's not cultivated, if it's not nurtured, not nourished, it will, it, will, it will remain dormant or it won't, mean, remain not, won't, won't become fully developed. I mean, that's essentially what a good education is. Education is not, no one's giving you a brain. No one's giving you a mind. 
Education is training your mind, directing it, giving you the shortcuts, learning logical methods, organized ways of thinking. And the same thing with feelings. Whether our schools achieve that or not is another story. But that is the goal. And the goal in good parenting is the same thing. You're not creating a child. You're not creating a personality. You're shaping a personality. But shaping is critical because how many of our talents remain within us and not fully actualized, not fully developed, or developed perhaps in the wrong way? So the key thing is to know we have it within us. And the first thing is whether we had the affirmation and the validation. So when a little child begins to walk or experiments with some other part of life, you can immediately see the parent supporting, smiling, encouraging. And even if the child falls, keep pushing at it. Instead of being disappointed, the child looks at these, these, uh, these signals and shapes the child's attitude. When you give the child the confidence, so it's not a matter of always, excel, of always being perfect, but it's a matter of continuing no matter what happens. Imagine, and there's no one that begins to work, walk without falling once or twice or more times. That's called the life experiment. Now, when we look at it, we say, why can't a child just get up and start walking? No, that's part of the beauty. The falling is part of the beauty because that means you can fall and still get upon their feet and try again until you master it. A child begins to speak. That stage is such an interesting stage. It's not like from no speech to total speech. It starts slowly, a, a, a letter, a word, an expression. This is part of the beautiful development that the child will learn to own their growth and not that someone imposed it upon them. Because the other hand is, if a, if a parent is so compassionate, quote unquote, doesn't want the child to fall, you'll hold your child, you're not doing your child a service. You want the child to be able to fall. At the same time, you want to be there and say, you can do it. You're essentially nurturing the element and cultivating netzach, the, the drive. Even on small, small levels, it all begins with little things. The drive, the determination, the, the tenacity, the endurance necessary. And you'll see that people who are, that, that level of endur- that endurance is cultivated at young age. As they get older, obviously when it comes to more serious things and bigger things, well, I say, should say everything is serious, but the bigger issues, that will come into play big time. So the first always of usual suspects where there's a lack of netzach is often the impressions and the influences that shaped our attitudes when we were young. If we had teachers who were weak, if we had educators, parents, when I say weak, I mean they did not create that drive. We didn't see it in them and they didn't encourage it in us. Then often that netzach will remain unrealized to the fullest extent. So, if a person's in that situation, let's talk about that. That doesn't mean all is lost. It's just like any talent. It's still lying dormant. It's waiting to be released. It's waiting to, be, to spread its wings. But the knowing that it's there is critical. Because if you don't think you have it, then you say, okay, you know what? I'm just not wired to be an enduring and tenacious person. When a, a challenge comes my way, I give up. There's some people I've heard this all the time. That's not correct. You have it in you completely. It's, never been, it's not been cultivated, perhaps. So you, don't, so you feel like you don't have it. But you have, so the, how do you deal with it? So whatever age you're at, no matter what has happened, even the worst case scenario, which is a person really doesn't have the confidence and feels that they su- can succeed. So as soon as there's a setback, they say, oh, I, I always knew it. You know, people right away say, yeah, I knew I couldn't do it. I thought I could. I tried. It didn't work. The key thing is to fight to begin with small battles. It's divide and conquer. You can't overcome a psychological, res- a psychological um, resistance. And here I mean resistance, resistance to being tenacious, to being enduring, without um, starting small. If you take on a big project, then often you're not going to succeed because it's very hard to change the mindset. To change mindsets is small steps. You're not going to run a 21-mile marathon overnight. But you can run a mile or half a mile doesn't matter, even a block. Make small successes breed larger successes. And there's nothing like success that leads to developing and cultivating netzach, endurance. Because when you feel that you've reached the finish line, even if it was a small goal, it was a, a daily goal, 
make a daily goal, a weekly goal, that feeds your confidence. You say, okay, I was able to do it till here, so now let me try two days, let me try three days. So take on a resolution that you know is not very difficult for you to do, and no matter what happens, make sure it gets done that day. If you need help, talk to another person. Do it with another person so it keeps you motivated. That type of element feeds your netzach, feeds that enduring element, and that creates that success that will then feed the next success. Once you start building up, it's like building up your own muscles, building up your endurance, conditioning yourself, even on a physical level, you'll see you'll be able to take on bigger things. And this will, can transform your whole life in, in any given area. I remember speaking to an individual who was dating, which of course in the area of relationships, always this, all, everything gets magnified and amplified because our vulnerabilities are, are exposed, our, our past experiences, our fears, our insecurities. And the dating was going well. He made a very wonderful woman. They were both very compatible sharing but he says then then there's they hit some type of snag something they disagreed about and he started of course fretting maybe this is not for us so i said what about all the positive things yeah but you know all we need is one negative and it could destroy the whole thing so i saw immediately that it wasn't like he was expecting it or waiting for it he wasn't happy with it but i could see how one thing so i said why don't you put it into context i'm not saying we sh- you shouldn't deal with this challenge First of all, we have to see what kind of challenge is it. Is it that big as you're making it? But even if it's something serious, we have to put it into context. And with the goal, my goal was simply to, to, to calm him down. Not to solve the issue, to calm him down and say, okay, it's a lot of positives. It's a package deal. No human being is perfect. And essentially guided him a bit with that attitude. Had he gone back to the next date and with all, coming, coming all... You know, all filled with that, ang- ang- with that anxiety and with the fears, what will happen, it would have probably made it a lot worse. Instead, I said, listen, don't bring it up right now. Continue dating and, and have the conversation. The fact that it was done in a far more calmer sense changed things. And he was able to reignite the, the interest that he had, the positive things, to keep enduring, but to keep enduring to being more tenacious and making sure it happens. And later they got engaged and they plan to be married soon. So this is not a critique. It's just an analyzing what's going on inside you. How do you process things? So ask yourself that question. Things that, you're, that you like, that you love, you're committed to. What do you do when there's a setback? Now, if you're immediately from the people that grow into... To, 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 if, you're, if you're from the people that immediately pull back, you know you have to look at it. Now you'll say, what about, one second, maybe, my, maybe I have a good instinct and intuition, maybe this isn't for me. That's a fair question, and I'll address it soon. But it could also be that it's just something, a pattern, and that's something you need to look for. A pattern of not seeing things through, of not having that determination that's necessary to really, to really excel and succeed. Now, to address the question, maybe there are situations that are not, we're going to talk about that, because Netzach, a full-bodied Netzach, has to, of course, include that. There are some people that have so much drive and, amb- and ambition and determination, and it actually can be destructive, even self-destructive. So we'll address that. So that's why we always need to check with another person, with an objective party, to make sure that your determination is well, is, um, is well directed and, and necessary in the given situation. If a person is in a marriage, with a relationship, a, 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 an ongoing relationship with children, so there clearly, you don't pull back when there's a setback. You do whatever it takes to fight for it. And that all is that, that midah, that personality called netzach, the determination, the, the drive. That is so critical. Now, I gave a scenario of someone who did not have it or had a weakened state of it, and that's why you have to evaluate it. The first thing is evaluating in your journal or on your paper, write down how, what is your pattern and routine when it comes to these type of challenges. And when you do have face competition, when you face resistance, what do you do then? Now, if the answer is that you pull back in a week or so, we spoke about that, so then the need is to cultivate and exercise that muscle called netzach, that muscle called endurance within you, that uh, emotional attribute and, virtu- uh, attribute and personality type. Now, if you, if you do have it, which is great, 
So then the question is, is it focused properly? Are there a downside to it? Is there any places where you're over-determined, over-ambitious? Are you hurting others in that process? And that will address, as we talk about the different components within Netzach itself, and in the next half of this uh, part of this series, meaning this uh, four, part four of this series. So, uh, but rather, regardless, Netzach is something that needs to constantly be looked at, like everything, nothing is automatic. It's true, some of us had that, either naturally or due to our family and upbringing, we were cultivated in that way to take on challenges. When you're challenged or there's resistance or competition or any type of difficulty, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't retreat, we don't cower in fear, we take it on, we figure it out, we analyze it, and that's vital. Because remember, it's not just about being uh, steamrolling forward, it's also considering, and with discretion, it's considering exactly what it is that you want to achieve. But overall, to sum up this first part of this discussion, determination, ambition, drive, tenacity, endurance, Netzach, victory, is a critical component in succeeding in any given area. You look at any story of success, you'll always see, here was the setback, and here's what the person did. They didn't give up, they tried something else. What was it that um, Thomas Edison said? He said, every time I failed, and sometimes 10,000 failures, he says, no, I learned 10,000 things that don't work. It wasn't a failure. It was, it was experimenting. Everything was feeding towards success. And then he ultimately made it. So even when there's a failure from an experimental point of view, no, you tried something and that doesn't work in this given area. It may work in a different area. That's an attitude of Netzach. And you see that with people who are like the Wright brothers. I am sure they were told by almost everybody, if not everybody, you're not going to create a flying ship, otherwise known as an airplane. It defies, it's an object that defies gravity, weighs tons, whatever the weight of the original airplanes were. But there was tenacity. There was a belief. Which brings me to the next component. In addition to the factors that I mentioned, which is family early influences, parents, educators, society, and even as adults, a society that keeps telling you naysayers, that every time you call them with a great idea, they tell you, ah, don't get so excited, you're being naive, I've been there. You want to have people who say, that's a great idea, they'll believe in you. Then there's the next thing which is vital, is, yes, a a certain element, I don't want to use the word faith, because some people wouldn't associate it with, a, with faith in divine. But it is a faith. It is a belief, a fundamental internal belief that you can succeed. And that is something that lies at the heart of Netzach. It still needs to be cultivated. But you'll see, even those that were told, no, it won't work, what's driving them? There's something in their soul, something in their spirit that says absolutely. Now, I'll just share with you a doctor I know who's a research doctor. Um, his medical research, he's took a, take a, taken upon himself in his lifetime to conquer two illnesses, not the, from the well-known ones, the lesser-known ones that have not been found, the cure hasn't been found, he's taken upon himself. Now he claims, he tells me always, that he's an atheist. But he has this tenacity to succeed. And he's had plenty of failures. He's still not gone. There. So I said to him once, you're the biggest believer I know. He says, what are you talking about? He says, look, look at you. Logically, you could say maybe these illnesses will not be conquered. Maybe some things are just are not meant to be healed. He says, no, everything can be healed. I said, how are you so sure? So you saw a conviction, which is also another word, a, a deep conviction. I don't care if he calls it God, he calls it something else, he calls it the spirit of nature, the, the power of healing, whatever it may be. But there's a certain type of supra-rational, I don't call it irrational, supra-rational conviction And that is a critical component in a proper netzach. It's a conviction. When you believe in something power strongly, it's stronger than any resistance that comes your way. Now, again, coupled with the the cultivation and the support, especially at young age, that is unbeatable. When you have the conviction and also that you feel confident, that then you're unstoppable. And that's where you see the individuals have gone through anything. When you hear the story of Helen Keller, born with such disabilities, and you think, you know, at best you can expect very minimally. 
but a certain drive of the human spirit, the conviction. Or a mother who chooses to ignore the doctor's advice about her autistic son, who say, just put him away in a home, take care of him, but you'll never build a relationship with him because he's not capable of that. And the mother insists. So the insistence and the conviction does not necessarily heal the child, but you see something in the look in their eyes. I've seen this with my own eyes. That there's a connection, maybe at a different level, maybe something that, the, that defies medical uh, science, but a conviction that this is my child and I'm going to connect to this child. And on the contrary, the challenges actually create even a deeper connection. And you have story after story. Now, of course, for every success story, you have many that have given up. That's why we need these stories, because we need to know it's possible. Now, I'm not talking about necessarily believing that suddenly you can fly. I'm not talking about building an airplane. We're talking about things that, are, that you may think logically may not be possible, but the conviction and the belief in it, coupled with the right support, as I said, that creates an unbeatable combination that creates the, the, the full power of Netzach in your life. So ask yourself the next question is, what, is your convic- what are your convictions like? What do you really believe in? What are you ready to fight for? What are the things, in, things that you're ready to die for? And I don't mean die, thank God, physically. I mean spiritually, psychologically, emotionally. What's, what's uncompromising? What's something that is absolutely... Um, an absolute in your life that you know you must have. That exercise alone is critical because in our, in our comfortable lives, very often our, our, those absolute convictions sometimes get watered down or we get apathetic and indifferent. Ask yourself that question. What is an absolute given in your life that you know for sure you're conv- in, and you're conv- your, uh, your conviction you're totally committed to getting it done. And if you don't have that, start developing. It could start with a value. Think of a value where you would not compromise yourself, that there's no way that you would cut corners. Think of it in terms of the people you love, and values I mentioned, other convictions. And you'll find, and especially, I'm not talking about a conviction, I want to make a lot of money. Even though there you see a lot of netzach, you see a lot of drive there for obvious reasons. But I'm talking, obviously, on a deeper level, things that have deeper and longer lasting quality. And I'm not taking away from the drive in succeeding in business or, 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 or making money. But remember, at the end of the day, that's a means to an end. And we'll talk about that as more when we talk about the different elements of Netzach. So conviction is number two in this, in this uh, formula. Now let's talk about the, the balanced Netzach. Like it is with each of the seven emotions, they all need the others to be complete. Just like in a human body. We have different organs, we have different um, limbs, we have different faculties, but they all, they all cooperate with each other and they all give and take. So the same is with these emotions. So Netzach has seven components and when you now we're going to do is review the, and analyze and evaluate each component that makes Netzach into a healthier Netzach. Let's begin with the love of Netzach. The love the love with the Netzach. That Netzach is not just a uh, driving force. There's an element of love within it. First of all, the Netzach should have something that you love. You're not just determined to do something just to win. You're not winning just to win, because, but there's something that there's loving in, in this. You're the Netzach for something. Well, we talked about Netzach within love. That's the endurance within love. But now the love within endurance is recognizing the thing love and that the, that the Netzach endurance has an element of lovingness in it. Very often you could see someone that's very loving, that's very driven, and you wonder, do they have a certain sensitivity? And especially in the area, there are people driven even in areas of love, and at the end of the day hurt the person that they love. So you must have love within Netzach. It has to have that element, or else it can become a raw determination that is completely... It's just driven without the, the, that uh, beautiful quality that is so necessary. And if you think about it, it really creates a far more healthy Netzach. Because then the Netzach is not just this, as I said, raw drive, raw determination, or even conviction, but it's connected with love. 
And the difference is very simple. If, if, if you see that your determination in some way is hurting the one that you love, then there's a problem. So when you have love within determination, you have love within endurance, it becomes a far more beautiful, sensitive love. A sensitive endurance, I should say. Point number two is the opposite, the discipline within endurance. You need to know when to stop. There are people who are so determined about something that they, are, they become, as I said before, determination as an end in itself. They must win, no matter what. But there are situations where you may have done what you had to do. We're not talking about someone just retreating when, it was, when there's resistance. You did what you had to do, but now you have to stop. Maybe now you have to create space. Let's say a person is determined to re- reconcile with someone they betrayed or with someone that betrayed them for that matter. So they, someone was a relationship, a marriage, or a friendship. So that's a beautiful quality. You're ready to fight for it. Excellent. And your, and your conviction is there. What, is there any limits to it? Obviously there are. Because you may be doing everything you need to do, but the other person is not responding yet. Do you still knock on their door? So this is not a simple question to answer because it's case by case. In some cases, you have to keep going. But in others, you may have to, you say, you, you, you leave your message. It's very clear that you're in, but sometimes the other person may need time. Maybe they were hurt by you. So it's not just your determination that's going to make this work. And there's some people feel, and, and your ego can get in the way as well, where you feel, I must win. I must win this person back. That's just an example. It could be in other areas as well. In business, you decided a certain project, you put money into it, you lost the money, things are not working, but you feel you must succeed. Now, is the must succeed because the project is really the right one or because you need to win? Now, again, this is not a simple answer. The Wright brothers, you could say it was their own pride but they, and, and they ended up succeeding. But there are situations where your pride gets in the way. That's why it's vital to have the balance of gvura, which creates, you need the brakes to the gas, which is this, it's essentially discretion in endurance. Discretion. Limits, knowing what those boundaries and limits are. So it's not you're eliminating Netzach, you're balancing it. Number three is the compassion within Netzach, which is more than just love, as we've discussed in the previous uh, parts of this series. Compassion is even when someone doesn't deserve it. You know, love, you could say the love and in, in, in the endurance is with love. Sometimes where there's a drive, you have to also have mercy, compassion. Empathy. And that's the third component, which is also is about rounding out the determination and making sure that nobody is hurt in the process. Not just that there's love, but there's also compassion. This you find many times a boss, a person who's in a position of authority, a leader. So their leadership, on one hand, you requires the quality of Netzach. It's one of the key, the key, the key ingredients for good leadership. Endurance, drive, determination, not giving up. But is there also compassion? Is it a compassionate leader? Is it a leader that also shows that empathy that's necessary? Is it easy at times? No, because when you're in that drive mode, it's sometimes it's, oh, you forget. But then you see the people who have that element of empathy within them. Then, of course, number four is the determination within determin- endurance within endurance. That's the evaluation we began with. What is your endurance like? Is it a high level? Is it a low level? What what are your convictions like? So we address that. But that's the the fourth component, is the evaluation of the endurance within endurance. And And does the endurance endure? It's not just a play of words. Endurance also needs to endure. It also needs to be fed and needs to be evaluated properly. Then comes number five which is hoid. Hoid, as we discussed, is yielding, flexibility, humility. It has similarities to gvura, which is why it's on the left side, because it's like the balance. If gvura is the brakes to the gas of love, so hoid is essentially the brakes to the drive of netzach. But the element here is really humility, yielding. So gvura was more evaluating the boundaries, the limits to, to your endurance. And now we're talking about what is going on inside you. So there's, of course, overlap. 
What's going on inside you? Is there the proper humility, the proper flexibility, and determination, ambition, drive, conviction needs that more than anything. It's the humility that really checks and, and um, counters the negative elements that determination can lead. You see people who, I mentioned steamrolling, their drive is so powerful for success that their egos go through the roof and they will hurt. They will hurt others and they can even hurt themselves without even knowing it. And hoid, point number five, is the thing that checks that. So hoid and gvur are work hand in hand. One is about the boundaries and one is the very sense of what your feeling is. And the flexibility, as determined as you are, as enduring as you are, you always need to be flexible. You know, if, if um, I mentioned before that the 10,000 ways, he said, Edison said, 10,000 ways that, uh, that, that don't work, had he continued insisting that I have to try those ways, that would have been wrong. He learned from his experience and now said, let me try a different way. That's called flexibility. Endurance has to have that balance or else you can just try the same thing again and again and expect different results, which is, of course, insanity. So endurance requires an element of breathing room, not just you're stuck with one way. No problem. You have that goal? Great. Maybe we got to get to it. We have to go to it a different direction. So don't be trapped. Don't be married to your method. Be flexible and allow other methods in. Number six is you saw bonding, commitment. Now, you'll say commitment isn't that endurance. Now, endurance is the commitment element that we spoke about, the conviction, the drive, the ambition, the determination. Bonding is that the determination is filled with an element of bond. You're bonding with it. Just give an example. Talk about a boss. When a, a boss, uh, someone who's an employer, and he hires people, talented people, and they're, uh, someone's not living up to their potential. Now, the boss can call that person in and say, hey, um, I hired you for something. You're not living up to my expectations. Here's the ultimatum. Maybe even say it in nice words, but basically it's just essentially you need to achieve these goals. Or there's another approach and say we're in it together. This is the mission of our organization that I founded or that I'm leading or that we're a team. In other words, instead of just focusing on the determined, determined goal, the endurance itself, turn it into a bonding experience. There has to be bonding that we are bonding with the thing that we're dr- driven to, toward then the determination and endurance has the element that is far more than just, let's just succeed. And you see this with any good coach, with any good commander-in-chief, with any good manager. What they do is they motivate that people feel we're part of a team, a team effort. And first of all, the people are bonding with each other, but most important that they're bonding with the goals, that they feel they own it. So the determination always has to have, the endurance should have, that you're bonding with the thing that you're enduring, you, the, with the goals that you are enduring the challenges in order to achieve those goals. Because if not, what's hap- what happens is, if you're not bonded with it, then you may have the drive, but at some point you'll start asking yourself, why am I driven for this anyway? But if you're bonded with the objective, that you know this objective is something that's connected with my soul, with my mission in life, that changes everything. Because then it becomes the conviction becomes one that you're bonded with the thing that, you're, that your conviction is directed toward. And finally, dignity, malchus. Now, dignity is essentially, there's no, nothing that is going to be healthy if it does not engender, if it does not cultivate dignity. If you have a determination, a need for victory and winning, but in the process, the dignity of others are compromised, that you're stepping on others, that you're hurting others, that is just a drive that you see this in different stories of people who succeeded greatly, but how many casualties in the way? And they themselves sometimes betray their own souls, even their own dignity. So determination and netzach without dignity is going to be far from complete. So the question is, is it bringing more dignity to myself and to all those around me? Now, if you take netzach, determination, endurance, and you have the love, the discipline, the compassion, the endurance within endurance, the humility, the flexibility, 
the bonding and the dignity, then you have yourself a full rounded, a complete emotion. Now, none of us are going to be perfect, but this is what we're directed towards. That's the part four of becoming a better you. Seven weeks to a better you. Look forward to continue this series next week with part five, which is going to be flexibility, humility, yielding, hoid. Simon Jacobson here, Meaningful Life Center, MeaningfulLife.com. This is part four of a seven-part series, Seven Weeks to a Better You. Please check us out at MeaningfulLife.com. Share, comment, suggestions, questions, everything. We'd like to bond with you and connect with you in an enduring fashion. Thank you so much. This program is brought to you by the Meaningful Life Center. Please help us continue our programs. Make even a small contribution at MeaningfulLife.com slash donate.